This video is on factoring polynomials by uh, factoring the difference of two squares. When you're factoring polynomials, the first thing you always look for is a greatest common factor. If it has four terms, you look to group. If it has three terms, you look to use the table method or swing and divide. If it has two terms, you look and see, is it the difference of two squares? If you have two perfect squares, m squared is a perfect square because m times m is m squared. 64 is a perfect square because eight times eight is 64. Four times four is 16. n times n is n squared. Three times three is nine. n times n is n squared. 11 times 11 is 121 and so on. All of these are perfect squares. So your formula for perfect squares, you can look at it either way, but it's always gonna be two binomials One's gonna be a plus, one's gonna be a minus. So when you see a binomial that's a difference, check and see, are they perfect squares? If they are, you can go ahead and write a plus in one binomial and a minus in the other binomial. The first term, it's gonna go on the left side, the square root of m squared is m. And on the right side of the minus sign, We'll go on the right side of your plus and your minus sign in the binomial. The square root of 64 is eight. And that's my answer, m plus eight times m minus eight. If I fold out these two binomials and simplify it, I would end up back with m squared minus 64. On example two, I have the difference of two perfect squares. So it's gonna be plus on one binomial, minus on the other. The square root of 16 is four, the square root of n squared is n, so the square root of 16 n squared is four n. Four n. The square root of nine n squared is three n. Three n. So my answer is four n plus three n times four n minus three n. If I multiply these two binomials together, I would end up with this question. One more example. Here I have the difference of two squares. I'm gonna do a plus and a minus. Square root of 121 is 11. That goes on the left side of both. The square root of four n squared is two n. That goes on the right side of both. You try number one. On number one, I have a difference of two squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my plus and my minus. 81 is a perfect square. Square root of 81 is nine. So that goes on the left side of both. Square root of n squared is n. That goes on the right side of both. Let me work one out. Nine times nine is 81. Nine times negative n is negative nine n. N times nine is positive nine n. N times negative n is negative n squared. Negative nine plus positive nine cancels out and you're left with 81 minus n squared. These will go pretty fast. Try number two. This is a difference of two squares. So one binomial is gonna be plus, the other is going to be minus. The square root of two m squared is two m. That goes on the left side of both. The square root of 16 n squared is four n. That goes on the right side of both. Try number three. Number three, I write my plus and my minus. The square root of first term is eight n. Square root of the second term is one. One is a perfect square because one times one is one. Try number four. Have a plus and a minus. Square root of first term is seven G. Square root of the second term is H. So your answer is seven G plus H times seven G minus H. On example four, I have one where there is a greatest common factor. I have a common factor, so I always, always need to factor out a common factor if I have one. Three goes into both 27 and three, and n 
We'll go into both of these as well. Your greatest common factor is 3n. When you factor that out, you're left with 9n squared minus 1. This is the difference of two squares. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So it's going to be 3n times. We're going to have a plus, a minus. The square root of 9n squared is 3n. And the square root of one is one. So here's your answer. I had a common, greatest common factor I had to factor out first. So will number one. Try number one. On well, number one, your greatest common factor is x. That leaves you with nine x squared minus four. This is the difference of two squares. So we'll have a plus and a minus. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 4 is 2. So your answer is x times 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. Try number 2. Number two has a greatest common factor, it's h. That leaves me with h squared minus 100. These are both perfect squares and it is the difference in them. So I'll go ahead and write my plus, my minus. The square root of h squared is h. The square root of 100 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Try number three. Number three has a greatest common factor of 5x, that leaves me with x to the fourth minus 9. This is the difference of two perfect squares. So I'm going to go ahead and write my plus, my minus. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Square root of 9 is 3. Now let's check right here. Is this the difference of two perfect squares? X times X is X squared, but three is not a perfect square. So I'm done. I can stop right there. Try number four, something unique will happen. Let's see if you figure it out. Well, number four, I do not have a greatest common factor. I do have the difference of two perfect squares. So I go ahead and start with my plus and my minus binomial. The square root of the first term is y squared. The square root of the second term is one. What's unique about this one is y squared minus one is the difference of two squares. Y times y is y squared, one times one is one. So I need to take it a step further, bring down my first binomial. And when I do the difference of two squares on this one, I'm going to do my plus and my minus. Y times y is y squared. One times one is one. This is not the difference of two squares. So now I'm done. My answer had three binomials. The answer is y squared plus one times y plus one times y minus one. Try number five. Number five has no greatest common factor. It is the difference of two squares. Square root of the first term is 4y. Square root of the second term is 1. Is that my answer? It is my answer. But let's try this one and see what happens differently. Do number 6. And number 6, I do have the difference of two squares. Square root of the first term is 4y squared. Square root of the second term is 1. This time I have another difference of two squares, so I need to take this a step further. It's going to be a plus and a minus. Square root of the first term is 2y. Square root of the second term is 1. I check, is this the difference of two squares? It's not. 
I'm done. My answer is three binomials. Try number seven. Number seven has a greatest common factor of three n. That leaves me with nine n squared minus one. Nine n squared minus one is the difference of two squares. So I have a plus and a minus. Square root of that first term is three n. Square root of the second term is one. There's your answer, try number eight. Number eight is the difference of two. There is no greatest common factor. It is the difference of two squares. Four A is the square root of the first term. Nine B is the square root of the second term. I am done. There's my answer. Try number nine. M squared minus nine N squared. That is the difference of two squares. There's no greatest common factor. So I'm going to do my plus binomial and my minus. M goes on the left. 3N goes on the right. And your answer is M plus 3N times M minus 3N. Try number 10. Number 10 does have a common factor of 2. I'm going to factor it out. I'm left with c squared minus 16d squared. I now have the difference of two squares. So I have a plus and minus. c goes on the left. 4D goes on the right. Your answer is 2 times C plus 4D times C minus 4D. And that is your video on factoring using the difference of two perfect squares. Thank you.